Danger Dolan. From body morphing aliens to mutes in William Shatner masks, we look at the 15 scariest movie characters. Number 15. Dr. Weir, Event Horizon. While some consider Event Horizon to be an overrated schlocky mess, no one can deny how batshit insane Sam Neill becomes. Starting as a tame starship designer, his descent into madness and ultimate possession made the end result scary as balls. Weir's desires to send the rescue team to literal hell make him the least desirable person to run into in a space rescue mission. Well, him and that guy from Sunshine. Number 14. Max Cady, Cape Fear. De Niro has played some truly psychotic characters, from Travis Bickle to Rupert Pupkin, but none have approached the pant-shitting terror of Max Cady. Tattooed and muscled up from a prison sentence, he goes straight for revenge against Nick Nolte in the remake of Cape Fear. And De Niro is terrifying, from killing your pie to seducing your daughter. Katie has all your nightmares in spades. The character has lost some of its edge from the numerous parodies over the years, like that Simpsons episode with Sideshow Bob in the Katie role. Number 13. Pennywise It. Ah, oh, Tim Curry. The man responsible for making many men dress in fishnets also made many of those same men perpetually traumatized of clowns living in the sewer. Pennywise rivals Freddy Krueger in the goofiness to horrifying ratio by traumatizing kids and doing horrible clown moves, but ultimately loses scare points, returning into a giant spider at the end of the film. A lame giant spider. You kinda end up just feeling like, what the fuck was I afraid of here? Unless you don't like spiders. Number 12. Jason from Freddy the 13th. So this is everyone's favorite hockey player, from drowning in lakes to being resurrected as a kind of mystical zombie who slaughters teen campers. Jason will make sure you are afraid of going camping, or at least from not going to the place where the site has legends of people drowning while camp counselors are having sex. I mean, that's just a given. Of course, most know Jason wasn't the killer in the first film, and even in the fifth, but he has become the icon for creepy campsites everywhere and he's the world's number one machete salesman. Number 11. Pinhead from Hellraiser. As we've said before, Pinhead isn't really the sensual villain in the first Hellraiser, and more a force of nature that comes and fucks up all your shit. An unfathomable and uncontrollable cyclone of pain and pleasure. Pinhead is iconic for the great visual design and effects work, with him and his entourage of BDSM demons. While well, he is softened as the series goes on, with it turning out that these creatures were people who dive too deep into the sexual fetish ocean. Still early on, he represents all the hidden desires for the abyss of the unknown that we all harbor. And that's what makes him scary. Number 10. Frank Booth from Blue Velvet. A David Lynch has been an expert at creating the most sickening and disturbing images in American cinema from his start with Eraserhead. Throw a maniac like Dennis Hopper in and you better get ready to hide under the bed. Hopper plays a character with a type of crazy that only comes from being crazy, intimidating the hell out of Kyle McLaughlin and scaring the crap out of the rest of us. This either huffing, past blue ribbon drinking psycho is the exact person you don't want to go on a joyride with, and considering Hopper's drug habits in real life, either would just be the start. Number 9. Sodako Ringu. Killer VHS tapes aren't scary at all. I mean, who even has a VCR anymore for this to even happen? Sadako is the icon for J-horror, showing the typical creepy ass stuff that we would come to expect from Japan in the 2000s, and by that we mean scary as shit dead girls crawling out of your TV to give you a heart attack. In a game of chain mail turned deadly, Sadako plays on the urban legend mindset that deeply scares us all fuck with a what if it's true from when you get tagged in a Facebook status claiming that a demon will come kill you tonight if you don't share. If you are sharing it, you're probably sitting in a damp puddle when someone mentions Sadako. Sorry. Number 8. Pazazu the Exorcist. By that, I mean by Regan and the demon that has taken control of her in the original Exorcism of Terror. Having Regan take form of a sweet little girl and then into your mother sucks cocks in hell over the course of the film will convert you into believing that there are demons out there waiting to take you over. From the vomit to the spider walking Pazazu is a evil bastard and on screen it's a scary demon that can mess you up and turn your daughter into a foul-mouthed 
pus oozing, crucifix stabbing crazy. Then again, it's nowhere near as scary as James L. Jones in a locust costume. Number seven, Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And now we get to our favorite chainsaw enthusiast, that is in the original film, not later on, when they give him a speaking spell to show he's dumber than a box of hair. There isn't one person alive that can say they didn't leak a little bit of bodily fluids the first time Leatherface rips open that steel door to grab our teenage meat sacks for butchering. Let us only talk about how fucked up the rest of the Chancel family is. Still, none of them are wearing someone else's face. Fun fact. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 has Dennis Hopper playing another batshit crazy motherfucker, so it's basically Frank Booth vs. Leatherface the movie. At least that's what I pretend it is. Number 6. Damien the Omen. Scared of having kids? Well, at least they won't turn out to be the Antichrist. Well, hopefully not like in this case. Again, speaking about the original film and not the remake from 2006, Damien is a scary little brat and all you have to do is stand there for you to get a feel of what Satan's offspring can do. Damien will ignite your fear to reproduce, or more accurately, your fear to adopt a child. Remember to always check the head for triple six birthmarks. That's a good sign you should stay far, far away. Number five. The Thing. It can kill you by getting in contact with just one cell of your body, but most likely it would just rip your hands off or something. But either way, the Thing is an almost perfect predator that can imitate its prey perfectly after consuming them. That's not to mention its ability to create whatever else it needs to kill your ass, like giant teeth and tentacles. Talk about body horror. The Thing is such a threat that the film makes the point that in a populated area, it would eventually destroy all life on Earth by simulating it. So to recap, Master of Disguise Alien that only needs to touch you to seal your fate and is the embodiment of the apocalypse. A definite dinner guest. Number 4. Freddy Krueger, A Nightmare on Elm Street. The old nightmare master himself who is made of exactly that. All your nightmares manifest to destroy you. Turning teenagers wet dreams into, well, real life messes of a different kind, Freddy is vicious and crude in his quest for supernatural revenge. What gives Kruger his menace is a combination of pure, uncontrollable power in the dream realm and his humorous personality. Freddy is having a ball slaughtering you in that dream where you rock up naked to class and that makes it all the more scary. Number 3. Michael Myers from Halloween. A horror legend and credited for being the mold of almost every slasher villain that followed, Michael Myers is the unstoppable shape in the shadows. Killing teenagers on Halloween is the favorite pastime of the Shatner mask wearing murder machine and nothing is going to stop him. Not bullets, explosions, falling down a mine shaft, crazy supernatural cults. Yeah, let's not talk about that last one. The stuff was a real low point for old Mike. Luckily, he had such bright things in his future. Than like fighting Buster Rhymes on a reality TV show. Number two, the Tall Man Phantasm. The criminally underrated Phantasm is a childlike nightmare encapsulated on the silver screen, and what's more terrifying than a seven-foot giant when you are four foot. The Tall Man is harvesting the bodies of the dead to create his dwarf army for reasons that we don't really understand. But who cares? The guy has superhuman strength telekinesis and an army of flying spheres that will drill your head open. No matter how confusing the Phantasm films get, he is always there to scare the crap out of you by the end of it, without ever seeming goofy or fighting Josh Hartnett. Number 1. Bob from Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me. Yes, technically Bob is much more well known for the TV episodes of Twin Peaks, but he is at his scariest in Lynch's film prequel to the series. Going all out in the crazy department, the film shows us the inside of Bob's throat at points to scare and disgust you at the same time. Let alone that we know for the length of the film just what Bob represents makes it all very scary. This is amplified by both Frank Silver's and Ray Wise's performances. Bob is undefined terror capable of taking you over and causing you to commit the most unthinkable deeds on the ones you love. Like others on the list, Bob is a force that can't be understood or stopped and could be the evil that lurks inside all of us. Or nah, maybe he's just a creepy motherfucker. That's it for this countdown, and have a go-